When water reacts with carbonyl compounds, we produce hydrates. When alcohol reacts with carbonyl compounds, we produce acetals. What happens, however, when our amine reacts with a carbonyl compound? Well, it depends on the type of amine that we are talking about. If the amine is a primary amine, we form something called an amine. However, if the amine is a secondary amine, we form a product known as the N-amine. So what exactly is the difference between these two products and why is it that when primary amines react with our carbonyl compounds we produce the amine but when secondary amines react with our carbonyl compounds we produce the N-amine. So let's begin by discussing the reaction mechanism of the formation of the amine. So primary amines react with carbonyl compounds to form amines and this takes place because our primary amine has two H atoms attached to our nitrogen atoms. So we'll see why that's important in just a moment. So this is basically an acid catalyzed reaction. That basically means in the first step we have an acid, the conjugate acid to our uh, primary amine that reacts with the carbonyl molecule. Basically the carbonyl molecule is protonated on the oxygen end of that double bond. So we have the oxygen uses its lone pair of electrons which acts as the Lewis base grabbing this H atom away from this acid placing the two electrons onto this nitrogen forming this primary amine as well as this resonance stabilized intermediate on which our positive charge is distributed among the oxygen and our carbon. Now basically this is a primary amine mean because only one R group is attached to our nitrogen so it contains the lone pair of electrons as well as these two H atoms and these two H atoms are important in the formation of our amine and only primary amines will react with carbonyl molecules to produce this product we call the amine. So in the second step, we have this primary amine using its lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen to act as a nucleophile creating a bond between this nitrogen and this carbon. So we form the following carbon nitrogen bond. Now we have two H atoms on our nitrogen, this new bond and the bond between nitrogen and our R group. So we have a positive charge on this nitrogen which is a destabilizing effect because nitrogen is relatively electronegative. So in the next step we have the first deprotonation step taking place in which a primary amine basically uses its lone pair of electrons, it acts as a Lewis base, to take away this H atom and deprotonate this nitrogen leaving these two electrons on the nitrogen forming the following more stable intermediate on which we no longer have a positive charge on this nitrogen. So this reaction is driven this way because this does not have a positive charge on that nitrogen but this does. Now in the fourth step we have the same exact acid molecule that is formed reacts with this intermediate. Now notice there are two places that can act as the Lewis base. Either this nitrogen can act as a Lewis base taking away the H atom or the oxygen can act as the Lewis base to take away the H atom. If the nitrogen takes away the H atom we simply go in reverse and eventually we reform these two reactants. However, if the oxygen uses its lone pair of electrons, we go down to step four. We produce this intermediate which contains a good leaving group. So basically our water molecule. So we have a positive charge on this oxygen which is a destabilizing effect because oxygen is the second most electronegative, uh, electronegative atom. So let's draw an H 
here. Okay, so basically step five will take place because this oxygen carbon bond is relatively weak and because the oxygen has a positive charge and because it's electronegative, it does not like to bear a positive charge. So this bond breaks off to form the following water molecule as well as an intermediate we call the ammonium ion. So this ammonium ion is resonance stabilized. So we have the carbon that can bear the positive charge or if we form a double bond using these two electrons, we place the positive charge on this nitrogen. So we see that the positive charge is delocalized among these two atoms. Now in the final step, we have our primary amine that was formed in step four. This primary amine uses its lone pair of electrons to take away the final H atom that is found on this primary amine that attaches itself to this carbon. So remember, we have two H atoms here. In the first deprotonation step, one of these H atoms was removed to form this molecule. In the second deprotonation step, step number six, this primary amine takes away the second H atom forming a double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. So this here, these two electrons form a double bond between these two atoms. And this final product is known as the imine. So we also reform, we regenerate the acid that we began with in the first step. So let's compare these two molecules, our starting material and the final product. In the starting material, we have a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. In the final product, we have a double bond between the carbon and our nitrogen. So basically we replace this oxygen with the nitrogen atom that contains contains this R group and notice that both of these H atoms have been removed. They have been deprotonated. So we see that in order to actually form this imine product in which we have a double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, we actually have to have two H atoms attached to this nitrogen. If we have less than two atoms, as the case is for secondary amines, our imine product cannot form and will not form, as we'll see in just a moment. So this is the reaction mechanism to imine formation when our primary amine reacts with our carbonyl molecule. Now, let's, uh, let's move on to anamine formation. So basically, secondary amines do not have enough hydrogens attached to the nitrogen to form imine. Instead, secondary amines react to form a slightly less stable molecule we call anamine. So let's begin with once again the reaction mechanism to our formation of anamine. So the first step is exactly the same, except now instead of having this acid that contains three H atoms attached to our nitrogen, two of these atoms are our R groups and only two atoms are the H atoms. So this still acts as the acid protonating the oxygen end of the carbonyl to form this intermediate that is resonance stabilized. So we have a positive charge on this oxygen and a positive charge on this carbon. So now, instead of having a primary amine, we have a secondary amine that only contains a single H atom and two R groups. So this now acts as a nucleophile in the same way that this acted as a nucleophile in step two. And basically this lone pair of electrons creates a bond between this carbon forming this intermediate that is not very stable once again because there is a positive charge on this electronegative nitrogen atom. So in the third step, we have a similar deprotonation reaction taking place where our molecule, this secondary 
amine uses its lone pair of electrons to take away the first and only H atom to form this more stable intermediate that no longer contains the positive charge on this nitrogen. So basically, for all approximation purposes, we see that step one, step two, and, and step three are basically the same. The only difference is instead of using a primary amine, we are using a secondary amine. Now, what about step four? Well, step four is exactly the same as step four in this case. So basically, we have two possible Lewis bases. Either the nitrogen can act as the Lewis base, in which case, if it does, we basically go in reverse and we follow these steps in reverse. However, if our acid um, um, if this oxygen uses its lone pair of electrons and acts as the Lewis base, if this oxygen grabs the H atom from this acid, then we go on to step four and we produce the following molecule that now contains a good leaving group and it contains our positive charge on this, uh, on this oxygen, which is, of course, a destabilizing effect. So step five, will quickly take place because we have a good leaving group so this will break off and we form the following resonance stabilized intermediate as well as our water molecule so once again we see a similar situation we have the ammonium ion that is formed here and the ammonium ion that is formed here now, the main difference between this reaction mechanism and this reaction mechanism is the final step, step six. In this case, we see that we have that second H atom that is attached to our nitrogen because we began with the primary amine that contains our two H atoms. So the final step here is easy. We just take off the H atom. We form the double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. But here, things aren't that simple because this nitrogen is... Uh, this nitrogen contains two R groups and no more H atoms because it began as a secondary amine and so it only had one H atom and this H atom was deprotonated in step three. So basically when we went uh, from this to this intermediate. So what other choices do we have in step six? So notice that we began with a ketone. So we have two methyl groups that are attached to this carbon. And one of these methyl groups, because of symmetry, it doesn't matter which one, one of these methyl groups contains an H atom that we can deprotonate to basically form a double bond. So basically, let's say this H atom can be removed by let's say a secondary amine and when this is removed this basically forms a double bond between this and carbon and this carbon here so we basically close this carbocation and we form the following final product that contains a double bond between this carbon and this carbon here and this molecule is called the N-amine. So the N-amine is slightly less stable than the imine. The question is why? Well, it turns out that the imine contains a more stable double bond. In this case, the double bond is more substituted than in this case. And that basically implies this is more stable than this molecule here. So once again, the N-amine is less substituted double bond compared to the mean counterpart and so it is less stable and that's exactly why when primary amines react with carbonyl compounds we never form the anamine we always form the more stable and more substituted amine molecule
However, in the case of secondary amines, because we do not have enough H atoms attached to our nitrogen, we cannot form the amine, and so instead we form the slightly more stable N-amine molecule. So once again, we conclude that whenever there is choice, the more stable amine is preferred over the N-amine because the N-amine contains a double bond that is less substituted and therefore less stable. However, secondary amines do not have enough hydrogens and so the amine will not form. Instead, we form our N-amine product. So, we see that not only water and alcohol can react as nucleophiles with carbonyl compounds, but also amines can react with carbonyl compounds. However, it matters what type of amine we are using. If we are using a primary amine, we form the amine. If we are using a secondary amine, we form the N-amine. Now, finally, in the next lecture, we're going to examine what happens when we we use a tertiary amine. What happens if a tertiary amine that does not contain any H atoms reacts with a carbonyl compound? That we'll talk about in the next lecture.